I've been to a few protests. I think today's protest is not necessarily yeah. bigger than the previous protest. Yeah. Yeah. However, um, if we look at the weather, the weather is not helping. I know a lot of people that are on the fence, yeah. uh, that know something is not right, and that yeah. these restrictions and these lockdowns are probably causing more harm than good. Yeah. So, what I see is there's still a lot of people to be persuaded to stand up for their rights, yeah. to come to these events. Um, a lot of people, I think, are afraid that they get labeled as a conspiracy theorist or that they are uh, labeled that, ah, you know, uh, because of you people will die, because you don't wear a mask and because you go to these mass gatherings. I think that the, the main driver why a lot of people are not coming to this protest is, is fear and propaganda. Yeah. Uh, we see a lot of propaganda happening every day on the radio and the news. You cannot escape the topic of COVID anywhere yeah. here in Ireland or in the most places in the world. And basically we have now reached a situation where, uh, like in the old days, they would burn the witches or there was a lot of superstition. That's right. I think COVID will prove to be another superstition that all these measures that we're taking um, basically for something that may or may not be worse than a flu. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not like a scientist, so sure. um, I'm going to be a little bit conservative about that. But what I do know, if I look at the, the figures that of the people that are dying or going into hospital, the last couple of months, this has not been like a very high number. Yeah. Uh, the cases, on the other hand, are going up a lot, but we have to question the the method that they're using for testing the PCR test, it is not, first of all, the virus has never been isolated scientifically, which right. means there is no proof that it actually exists. Secondly, they only have a little piece of genetic material that they're testing for with this COVID uh, PCR test, which could be any of the coronaviruses that circulate, and there's quite a few. Um, then also, it doesn't say if it is, uh, let's say, uh, replicating. So it doesn't say tell you if the virus is infectious. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you if someone is actually sick. That's why we have a lot of people that show no symptoms at, at all and are very healthy, like yeah. top supporters, people that go to the, let's say, uh, that play in Roland Garros. I think one of the players, I don't know his name, is actually suing the organization of Roland Garros because he mm -hmm. tested positive while well, he did like about five tests and that was the only test he was testing positive mm -hmm. while well, a test be just before that and after that were negative. Yeah. So what we can tell I think if you use logic mm -hmm. and if you look at the world population is about seven billion plus people. Yeah. And there's supposedly about one million people up to date that have died because of COVID or with yeah. COVID. That's another subject. Then that is a tiny, tiny proportion of the world population. I mean, that, that cannot be classified as a, a very big, dangerous yeah. pandemic. Yes. I mean, if this was really a level five pandemic, I would not be out on the street protesting. Yeah. You know, yeah. you would actually see people dying on the street. You would. There would be hazmat suits. People would be wearing would be hazmat, hazmat suits. suits. Yeah. Yeah, and that would be that would be a completely different story if that was the case. Mm. But I think in the beginning it makes sense that we have locked down for a couple of weeks. Yeah. But to we can it see out. that China is turning back to normal. Mm. People in Wuhan are doing big pool parties with thousands of people. Yeah. So why can we not ju just turn back uh, to normal and do what Sweden did? Sweden did not do any hard lockdowns. Yeah. But they are just doing fine and they have built up herd immunity and um, I think if anything we should not surrender our freedom for something first of all that cannot be scientifically justified because who is to say that all these measures are actually preventing people yeah. from dying. Yeah. Um, the suicide rates are up, uh, depression is up, um, a lot of people are not getting treatment in the hospitals That's for other right. very serious diseases. So we have to balance the fact that right now people are losing their livelihoods, their jobs, 
and it's, it's a really sad story to see so many people lose everything they've worked for their whole life. Well, I'm an optimistic person and I think gradually people will wake up, there will be an, a, a big mass awakening. Mm -hmm. Maybe things need to get worse before they get better. Yeah. So I think there will be another lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, do I think it's a bad thing? Yes. But do I think it could help us eventually to wake people up? Yes. So I think that it's going to be a long fight, uh, but we will, we will get there. We will get our freedoms back. They are complicit. Yeah. They are complicit. And um, when people realize that, when the masses realize that they've been deceived, they will lose all credibility. Yeah. And the people who work there, they will be haunted by a lot of people who will feel that they have lost everything. Yeah. So what will happen is they will not be able to find a job anymore unless it's for another like propaganda platform. Yeah. Uh, but this is something that is going on worldwide. We need more independent reporters. Um, a lot of the media is owned by the same companies. Yeah. And this is the story in, in many countries where only a handful of corporations, they own all the media. So we need independent reporters. We need people to do as much reporting themselves because we cannot verify the mainstream media because they all use the same sources and these sources are very questionable.